Hello Internet, I want to make this video to cover this article because I think this article is very very interesting and uh, more than the viciousness behind this, I think the more important thing that I want to take away from this article is the geniusness of this guy, how you can proceed with the information or very little information that you have available. So this article is about the brute force in the phone numbers of any Google user. So what this guy did is basically just using the mail ID of any person, you can find out the phone number of that person. What you need is just a mail id and come on guys finding the mail id of the people is very easy nowadays you can like maybe find it out on the internet the link to mail ids we can find that out on the social media for example linkedin linkedin just show the mail id of the person if you are connected with them so uh, there are multiple ways you can uh, get the mail id of the person and if you don't have any of it maybe then you can guess the mail id and then find it out so what exactly it does i want to show this brief video that is over here and all credit goes to this person so what is happening i want to show the things over here and then um, I'll explain about it in detail because I understood it fully and that's why I'm making this video. So there's a Python script that basically takes the mail ID as input and then gives the name a display name of the that person, the first name and the last name, the full name basically. And then uh, you get that full name and then uh, with some extra parameters you pass to this script that this guy have called GPB. Now you pass that information to the script and then uh, you are going to the Google's web page a login page of course and then uh, you are grabbing the last two digits of your mobile number and you know what this information is easily available if you just give the mail out of any person and then go to the uh, forgot password it basically tells that yeah we sent this otp to this this mobile number now you have enough information here you know the last two digits and as you can see you also have the country code that means you know the first two or three digits now you can use this information as he did here he provided the name and also like the uh, last two digits and the country code and uh, now here is the actual ingredient of the whole attack which is this token this is where he spent most of the time so he got this uh, bot card token the token is called bot card token he is using this and with this token you know you have the enough information and now here comes the actual attacks so there are like 48 49 thousand requests happening per seconds and those are all attempts to get the mobile number and out of it only one has to match and that has happened over here hit one found one phone number and you have the mobile number so that was the whole attack okay so this is how it worked now uh, i'm going to take you to the technicality of it how you managed to do that and uh, what are the learnings for us as a software developer so basically the whole thing started with the google form so this guy just disabled the uh, javascript on his browser if you don't know you can disable the javascript for the browser so if you go to the settings and if you go to the site settings in the any browser you have this option called javascript and here you see uh, option to disable the javascript so you can say site can use javascript sites cannot use a javascript so if you, if you do don't allow sites to use a javascript it will not use a javascript so this started the curiosity he basically disabled the javascript and was just checking that if i disable javascript does the google legacy form still works and what he find out that surprisingly if you disable the javascript the account recovery form which is legacy which is there before 2018 it still works because it still relies on the no javascript endpoints and then you find out that there is this endpoint called sign in username recovery that basically still works and what you have to do is you have to provide the information like the email and the name and uh, with that it basically checks if there is a match with this given information so for example if i give my mail id and um, then I give the mobile number and say that, yeah, this is my mail ID, this is my mobile number, does this match? The endpoint will basically say, yeah, it match or it doesn't match. This was the endpoint that he have. But now this is what he got. The next step that he have to tackle is, you have to basically guess the number and guessing the number is not easy. It's very difficult, but it certainly can be less difficult if you know a certain number out of your mobile number. So for that, he used the clever technique and everybody knows that, which is if you do a forgot password on the Google sign in page, you get to know, you actually get to know the last two digits of your number. It says that we send the OTP on this, this number and there's also a country code. So you get to know the 
first two or three digits of your mobile number so now what you have to do is the guess the numbers in between and that is actually a thing that you can paralyze with the multi-threading and you can like try to make the multiple requests and see if that can work now this is where the brute force thing comes into a picture and uh, to perform the brute force on the system like the google it's not easy they are definitely going to have the bot protections and the bot protection and the spam protection things for example they have a captcha like this so if you just try to like perform the multiple because they have a captcha that is presented that you have to do and again there is a rate limiting on the ips so uh, what he find out here is that there is a rate limiting on the ip addresses uh, and that's why I decided to like overcome this and uh, then the, he decided to use the IPv6 addresses with that you have this many combinations of the IP addresses possible so he basically rotated the IP addresses and try to see like if I perform with multiple requests does it allow and it allows that if you have a, a IP address changing then it would basically allow but that was also not a, a efficient one as he faced that mode temporarily more temporarily the document has been a mode so uh, using the ip addresses rotating ip addresses wasn't always a foolproof uh, and that's why he decided to use this bot guard token which work very effectively here he saw that there is this bot guard token if you are using a token that is there for the js enable endpoints and you are using that token in the js disable endpoints it is still surprisingly supporting that which it should not be and uh, that's where the thing broke and uh, you can use that token now this time it completely bypasses the capture or the bot protection you don't have any limits you can basically perform the multiple hits to this endpoint with the numbers that you have so uh, now here you have the open door now what you have to do is just like the guess the correct thing and uh, it would basically give the information now here the actual magic starts since you know the uh, first three digits and the last two digits so you can use the prefix suffix and you have to guess the uh, middle numbers also you know the display name by the way how you get to know the display name there is this cool uh, tool called uh, google uh, looker studio so the google looker studio is the tool so you find out that if you go to the looker studio and if you give the mail id of any person then it basically presents you with the display name of there so for example i created this empty document here and if i try to share it with some person then i can like give some information like jack henry something and invite that person as an editor and if i do that then um, i would basically have the display name of that person so that was the first thing you can get like the display of a person if you just know their mail id okay so uh, that's what he has used the script that i show that he has in his video that the python 3 script that basically uh makes an hit if you just i can show it again the python 3 is all named.py basically when you give the mail id of the person then transferring document ownership via luca studio so he is using luca studio same application and then you got to know the name okay so the luca studio is the app that basically gives information so if you see like he has just find out the open loopholes that are present in the multiple google systems the luca studio or the old legacy no js disabled endpoints and he has used that very little information which is available collectively to perform a attack it's not an attack it's just like he find out there is an open vulnerability which he reported uh but with just like little information that you can grab from the different sources he has used that and uh he has used that to basically perform the brute force and at one point it works so uh, i just want to like show that over here and uh show you it with a nice excali diagram that i prepared so the whole thing starts with the local studio you have the luca studio here to the Luca studio will provide the mail id and the Luca studio will give the display name of that mail id so now you know the name and the last name the full name of the person now here's the python script the python script that we saw in the video the python script will basically uh, do a job of performing a brute force okay but before that you need to know the last two digits and the uh, first three digits so that you can easily know if you go to the google sign in page you can like do a forgot password and you know the last two digits and the first three digits now here exactly you will hit the endpoint of the google and you will check if there is a match between the mail id and the mobile number there is an endpoint which is there in the legacy system which still works with the non-js things so you can use the same main point that you find out here now i have this mobile number and i have this mail id does this match if it match then the endpoint says that yeah it's match it doesn't match it says 
no and but that in points of course is the bot protected that means you cannot like spam it that's why a brute cat use a technique to rotate the ip addresses so use the rotating ipv6 addresses uh, but that was also not a foolproof solution as he said now to overcome the bot protection you find out there is a bot guard token that you can use which were actually supposed to work only with the JS enabled endpoints, but apparently it works with the JS disabled endpoint as well. Now, this is the again one loophole in the uh, Google system. The endpoint is completely open. Now, there is no any bot protection or the spam protection. You can perform as many requests as you want. And that's where he used the multi threading. So he used a 3000 threads something here to run his script that would perform 49,000 guesses per second. And when you perform 49,000 guesses per second, you will have a one hit very soon. And uh, when you have a hit, you basically know like what is the mobile number that you provided, which match with the, for which the Google endpoint said that, yeah, this is the correct mobile number. Performing this brute force attack is not that much time taking. He has also given the numbers over here. So if you have the country code with the United States, which is just one, so of course you have very less number there. So it takes 20 minutes if it's united kingdom it takes four minutes if it's a netherland 31 it takes 15 seconds while less with the netherlands because in the netherlands every mobile number starts with a 069 so that means like you know first uh how many digits 31 and then again the two so you know four digits and the last one so in total you know six digits already and uh, you have very less numbers to guess here so that's why just 15 seconds with the netherlands with the Singapore, it's just a five second. Maybe Singapore can have another mobile pattern that starts with some number. So I think this whole approach was very fascinating. The way he approached the uh, things with very less information available and the loopholes present in the multiple Google application to combine them and to find out what we can do. It's a really uh, clever thing, very genius. It's a masterpiece of the genius work and uh, ultimately it worked and this is the timeline of this vulnerability of course it's fixed now so in the april 14 you find out there is an issue he reported that and uh, on the 25th of the april there is a acknowledgement that yeah you caught it nice catch then some reward is awarded to this person then comes the fix the fix was made on the 22 of the may and uh, they roll out the fix and says that the deprecation of the non-js form worldwide and on the 6th of June, they confirm that no JS user name recovery form has been fully deprecated and the report is closed. So that means you can no longer perform this attack. It's fixed. But the overall approach this guy has used with the very less information that he can grab from the things from the open from the loopholes that are present and then combine them to uh, find something meaningful. It's really inspiring and it's a genius work.